What if Elon Musk actually pulls the plug on Crew Dragon? It sounds like it's in the distant future, but after Musk's recent bombshell statements, that possibility feels closer than ever. If that happened, it wouldn't just rattle SpaceX. It could leave NASA stranded, with its only ride to space hanging by a thread. But what if America's next great space vehicle isn't from SpaceX? Enter Dream Chaser, a sleek winged space plane that looks like a sci-fi shuttle and lands on runways like an airplane. It might just be the backup NASA desperately needs, and no one's been paying attention. In today's episode of TechMap, we're breaking down how Dream Chaser could be the ultimate alternative to Crew Dragon, why it may hold the key to NASA's future in orbit, and even the challenges ahead. Is this the dawn of a new space era, or just another dream chasing the stars? Space news has been absolutely on fire lately, but not because of a breakthrough mission or a new space race. This time, it's all about Elon Musk throwing down the gauntlet to the Trump administration, threatening to decommission SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. Crew Dragon is currently the vehicle NASA relies on to get astronauts and supplies to the ISS. SpaceX's CEO made the bold threat after President Trump floated the idea of cutting SpaceX's government contracts. Talk about a cosmic clash of titans. Hours later, Musk backtracked, saying, OK, we won't decommission Dragon. But the damage was done. This spat exposed just how much NASA depends on SpaceX and how shaky things could get if Musk pulls the plug. Here's why this matters. Dragon isn't just a cool spaceship. It's the only US spacecraft currently certified to carry astronauts to the ISS. Since 2020, it's been NASA's workhorse ending a decade of depending on Russia's Soyuz after the space shuttle retired. Dragon also hauls cargo and is even tasked with deorbiting the ISS by 2030. If Musk pulled Dragon, NASA would be in deep trouble. So what are their options? Let's break it down. Enter Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, a winged, reusable space plane that looks like it flew straight out of a sci-fi movie. This beauty is designed to deliver cargo to the ISS and there's even a crude version in the works. Space travel is heating up with this space plane, the spacecraft aiming to succeed NASA's retired space shuttle and potentially outpace traditional capsule designs like SpaceX's Crew Dragon in the race to low Earth orbit. Inspired by the lifting body design's advantages over conventional capsules, the Sierra Space Team pursued this innovative concept with big ambitions. Unlike capsules that splash down in the ocean or require special landing sites, Dream Chaser can touch down on public or commercial runways as short as 8,000 feet. That flexibility makes it compatible with a broad range of airports, both domestic and international. It uses parachutes and or rocket engines for a soft landing. By contrast, Boeing's CST-100 generally lands on solid ground with parachutes, or in emergencies, splashes down in water. Landing anywhere other than a runway, like a grassy field, dirt strip, or body of water, comes with added complexity, requiring specialized training and preparation. Runways, on the other hand, are meticulously engineered with lights, markings, and navigational aids to support safe takeoffs and landings. Opting for these smooth, predictable surfaces helps mitigate many of the risks associated with rougher, unprepared landing zones. The result? Greater efficiency and spacecraft reusability. Dream Chaser can be turned around for another mission faster, and its runway landing makes it easy to immediately retrieve sensitive cargo or attend to medical emergencies. Research payloads can be whisked straight from the runway to facilities like the Space Station Processing Facility for analysis without delay. While SpaceX's Cargo Dragon 2 has sped up its return process, it still needs a recovery ship and helicopter transport, much slower than rolling off a runway into a hangar. Dream Chaser also boasts a gentler re-entry with its low-G descent profile, which reduces stress on both cargo and crew. That's crucial for transporting delicate scientific materials or medical supplies and helps preserve the spacecraft's structure and heat shield. The craft's runway-ready design is complemented by non-toxic propellants and standardized systems, 
which eliminate the need for complicated recovery gear. Its ability to deorbit and land almost anywhere gives it unmatched versatility and opens the door for more international missions. Perhaps most importantly, Sierra Space is finishing its human-rated version of Dream Chaser. In the case of an in-flight medical emergency, its ability to land quickly on a standard runway could genuinely save lives. When it comes to cargo, SpaceX's Cargo Dragon 2 can haul up to six tons to the ISS and return three tons to Earth. Dream Chaser is built to deliver 5.5 tons to the ISS, but its advantage lies in its larger berthing port and more spacious cargo area. That means it can make better use of its payload capacity. Dragon 2, by contrast, has never launched with more than 60% of its full load due to volume limitations. That makes Dream Chaser potentially more cost-effective permission for NASA. SpaceX still leads in thermal protection know-how, but Dream Chaser is catching up fast. Its new heat shield is lighter, stronger, and built to endure up to 1,650 degrees Celsius. The spacecraft is covered in about 2,000 thermal protection tiles that wrap around every curve and control surface. Each tile is custom-shaped to fit perfectly, averaging about 10 inches square, larger than those on Dragon, simplifying installation and reducing the total number required. That said, smaller, uniquely shaped tiles are still needed, where black and white sections meet, adding some complexity. The black and white tile combo isn't just for looks. White tiles help reflect solar heat in orbit, while black ones efficiently radiate heat during re-entry. It's a clever thermal strategy drawn from lessons learned during NASA's shuttle era. The tiles are attached using a high-temperature silicone adhesive that cures at room temperature, another innovation that builds on decades of experience. And while Dream Chaser can't compete with SpaceX's Starship in sheer size or payload, it holds a niche advantage, point-to-point -point travel on Earth. With no need for giant launch towers like Mechazilla, it offers a more flexible option for lighter payloads and specialized missions. In short, Dream Chaser may not be the biggest spacecraft in the game, but its unique design, versatility, and runway-ready reliability make it a serious contender in the future of space transportation. Sounds like a perfect backup, right? Well, not so fast. Dream Chaser's first cargo flight is set for late 2025 at the earliest, and it's hitching a ride on ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket, which is struggling with a backlog of dozens of military missions. The crewed version? That's years away, probably not ready until the late 2020s. Here's the catch. Dream Chaser is awesome for cargo, but it can't replace Dragon's ability to carry astronauts and supplies anytime soon. If Dragon goes offline, Dream Chaser isn't ready to swoop in and save the day. So what about Russia's Soyuz? It's been around forever and NASA already uses it as a backup through a deal with Roscosmos. This agreement, extended through 2027, allows NASA astronauts to fly aboard Soyuz missions, while Russian cosmonauts fly aboard American commercial crew vehicles, such as SpaceX's Crew Dragon but leaning on Soyuz full-time? That's a tough pill to swallow. First, it's cramped. Only three seats, usually split between two Russians and one NASA astronaut. Compare that to Dragon's seven seats, and you're looking at a skeleton crew on the ISS, slashing research time. Second, it's expensive. NASA paid up to $86 million per seat in the past way more than Dragon's 55 to $88 million range. And let's not forget geopolitics. Relying on Russia, especially after tensions like those in 2022, feels like a step backward. Soyuz could keep NASA in the game, but it's a band-aid, not a solution. And with the ISS set to retire in 2030, every year counts. Speaking of 2030, the ISS is on borrowed time. NASA's got a plan to deorbit it safely into the Pacific Ocean. And guess who's building the vehicle for that? Yup, SpaceX. If Dragon or its deorbit variant gets axed, 
NASA's left scrambling for a new way to retire the ISS without risking an uncontrolled crash. Plus, the transition to private space stations, like Blue Origin's Orbital Reef, is still years off. No dragon, no clear path forward. It's a mess. And let's not forget the bigger picture. Musk's influence. SpaceX has racked up over $20 billion in NASA contracts since 2008. From Dragon to Starship for the Artemis moon missions, Musk holds the keys to America's space ambitions. This feud with Trump, who's pushing a 25% NASA budget cut for 2026, shows how one tweet from Musk can send shockwaves through the space program. What about other players? Boeing's Starliner was supposed to be NASA's second crew option, but it flopped its 2024 test flight and is nowhere near ready. Northrop Grumman's Cygnus is great for cargo but can't carry people. More importantly, it's not reusable. Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket is launching, but they don't have a crewed spacecraft yet. The reality? NASA's got no quick fix if Dragon disappears. So where does this leave us? Musk's backtrack on decommissioning Dragon buys NASA time. But this drama exposes a harsh truth. America's space program is heavily dependent on one company and one man. Sierra Space's dream chaser is a glimpse of the future, but it's not ready to save the day. Soyuz is a fallback, but it's costly and risky. With the ISS's clock ticking down to 2030, NASA needs to diversify its options fast. What do you think? Should NASA double down on Dream Chaser? Beg Musk to keep Dragon flying? Or maybe it's time for new players to step up? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like button if you're hyped about space. And subscribe to TechMap for more updates on this cosmic drama. Anyway, decommissioning Dragon is just a matter of time. Because as Eric Berger, who's a veteran in the space industry, knows a lot about what's going on, and even knows Elon Musk fairly well, said, This is not necessarily a bluff. Elon has been reluctant to take on new Dragon-related projects for a while now and would like to move human missions to Starship as soon as possible. Of course, it would completely end ISS and impair future commercial space stations. Wild times. Elon Musk isn't just dreaming about space. He's building the highway to get us there. And at the center of that bold vision, SpaceX's Starship. Elon has said it countless times, Earth won't last forever. Whether it's climate change, nuclear war, or an asteroid, humanity needs a plan B. And what's plan B? Is Mars. Starship isn't just a rocket, it's the vehicle for survival. Designed to carry up to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit, and up to 250 tons if they go all in and don't reuse it. This beast is built for big missions. To go interplanetary, Starship uses a clever refueling system in orbit, letting one ship fill up another before blasting off to the red planet. And get this, Musk wants to send five uncrewed Starships to Mars in 2026, with the first crewed missions as early as 2028. That's not sci-fi. That's SpaceX's working timeline. The first ship? It's got a name straight out of science fiction, Heart of Gold, a tribute to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Classic Musk, but Elon's thinking way bigger than a few missions. His long-term goal, a city on Mars, a real one. He's talked about a million people living there, with thousands of starships making the journey back and forth, carrying everything from life support systems, to building materials, to families,